Hey everyone, welcome to Living a Country. I'm Holly and welcome to Farmhouse Home Tours, our home tour series, where every Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we share a home tour of an Instagram influencer, a home decor stylist, or a home decor enthusiast here on our channel. Today I am so excited to have Heather from Farmhouse for Eight here today sharing her farmhouse styled home. She lives in a 1900s farmhouse that she has renovated and it's absolutely gorgeous. You guys are gonna get so much inspiration from Heather. So I'm so excited to have her here on the channel today. I'm gonna link down below her Instagram account so you guys can go follow her, check her out and get even more inspiration. I'm also gonna link down below our farmhouse home tour playlist so you guys can get tons and tons of inspiration from some other wonderful, wonderful ladies. A big thank you to Heather for sharing her home today and let's go ahead and roll that film and get touring Heather's home today. Hey everybody, I'm Heather from Farmhouse for Eight and I'd like to welcome you to my 1900s farmhouse. Um, today I'm gonna share a small portion of my home with you guys and I wanna show you how I have started to decorate for spring and I also want to show you how I mix in some vintage pieces into our completely renovated farmhouse. Um, when we bought this house, it had been abandoned for nearly 20 years. And so a lot of what was in the home wasn't um, salvageable. So with that said, we wanted to bring some of those old farmhouse vibes back in. And so I'm going to show you how we did that. So let's get started with the tour. When you walk into the farmhouse, we have a little seating area right here. And all I did to add spring to this area with, you know, not cluttering it too much because we do use it. Um, I've got this little market bag. I just picked it up from a craft store, stuffed it with newspaper on the bottom and then put some greenery and some cotton and some blueberries kind of spilling out the top and I think it's just a great way to bring spring into an entryway. Over here we have an old toolbox with um, vintage garden tools, some old books. I love the coloring on the books. We use books, old books, um, a lot throughout the house. So, And then just the terracotta pot with the fern. And I don't want to make you dizzy. Here is an old shutter that we used and I just got a little sign home sweet home on there and then just layered this um, succulent planter on the top of that and this is just a nice stable piece you can um, just use it all year round and just kind of change out the greenery and stuff that's on it so moving into the kitchen here is so this wood right here is wood that we used from an old outbuilding that we had to take down in order to add a garage to the home. And of course we wanted to reuse the wood. So we used it um, on the walls going down to the basement. And then that window there was also part of the home. And I just hung that up and then put a little planter. I don't know if you can see it very good. Put a planter and then filled it with some greenery. Right over here I have just a little wall in our kitchen that I just took an old um, basket, an old tobacco basket, and layered this cute little wreath that's just made out of feathers and eggs and it's got some moss and some twigs on it. Super springy, super simple. And then put some succulents in the old pitcher here and then just took an apron and a cutting board and kind of just hung it there. All kitchen stuff um, that we use. So it just makes a nice little display. Moving on to our stove area. Up here I put a tea a tea leaf wreath, say that three times fast. Um, just hung it up there with uh, command hooks. And down here, I just have this old vintage scale with a dish on the top with some eggs. And then we added the chicken. And then of course the candlelight. And then this fun little piece here, I picked up at a thrift store. A lot of my stuff is um, thrifted, flea markets, yard sales, 
things like that. There's not a lot of new stuff in our house, but I love this piece. I love the old wood on it, the canisters. We just cleaned them up good. I put some labels on it, and again, it's functional and cute. All right, and this side of the kitchen, over in the window there, we got some plants. Um, I use a lot of greenery to bring spring into the home. I don't start out with a lot of florals or, or color or anything like that. It is very much winter here in Minnesota still, so we um, just kind of welcome spring very slowly around here. So like I said, just using a lot of greenery. So over here again, I just got an old um, bean pot and then put some old kitchen utensils in there, a cutting board, and then the old terracotta pot. I love the patina on that. And yeah, just a cute little vignette in the kitchen. We don't like to overcrowd a lot in the kitchen just because we do use the space often. And there isn't a ton of room in here, so we need to um, keep the room that we have. So again, keeping it super simple on the counter with just this little ball jar um, for some spring flowers. And then layered it with this vintage find here. This is just um, part of an old stove pipe, like the cast iron, um, it's like the decorative piece that uh, went around it. So just layered that on there for a little conversation piece. Again, bringing the old into our new home. I guess it's not a new home, but everything in here is pretty much new. Over here, I love using ladders. Um, so I just took some little potted plants and all I did was took a little tack and shoved it in there and then hung little plants on each little layer of the ladder. So. I love old ladders and old stools and things like that, so I try to use them a lot um, in our home. Coming around the corner, I would say this is probably my favorite piece or favorite little nook in our house right now. Um, I live in a house filled with boys, so this is kind of my only like little feminine area I would call my own. It's just a little place that I like to sit and read magazines or books and I think it's just super feminine and girly and all the, the different shades of white. Again, in our house I like to keep the, the palette fairly, fairly neutral um, because then I, I can change things up and don't have to worry. Um, about it so I can add pops of color and it always goes with um, like our woods and whites that we have everywhere so um, you know I do a lot of red and green for Christmas and it kind of just it'll all blend and now for spring like I added the purple tulips and I think it just looks so pretty I got some mirrors layered up there and an old door these candlesticks were a goodwill find I think it paid like 50 cents a piece for them they're all mismatched, which is fine by me. Um, this fireplace mantle was actually new in oak, and all I did was age it with some plaster Paris and some paint um, and a little bit of sanding, but I did that, and then I did that architectural piece up there. It just came from Hobby Lobby. It was just a wood piece, and I made it appear to be old and chippy so here an old window and then just layered some greenery on it as well and then lots of texture on the bench and down here again I said I love benches and stools so there they are again and there's the old books again just stacked up there with a little candlestick on the top keeping it simple but yet adding those spring touches over here is the TV. Um, still just trying to keep the decor simple around it. We do use this area a lot. We do watch TV. Um, and so I didn't want to, you know, overcrowd the space and, you know, we can't really put anything in front of it. 
So all I did was put vintage shutters on each side of the TV and then just added some greenery in the Crocs down below. And then I've got an old door up top and then just put the horns on there. Moving around the corner here. We don't use this door a whole lot in the winter, so I'm not afraid to decorate in front of it. And again, I kept it very simple. Just an old metal um, vintage headboard there. And then I took this vintage umbrella and just added some greenery to it. Just kind of tied it on there. And I think it is super cute hanging on the door. You could also hang it on a hook, but to me, springtime, you know, brings like showers. What do they say? April showers bring May flowers. So kind of where you would need your umbrella. So that's my thought process there. Over here, again, I collect, what don't I collect? I collect um, these old chippy spindles. So I just have those in an old crate there. And then the chair with the boxwood topiary and the bunny. And then I got an old birdcage hanging there with a fern. Again, I took one of those bags from the craft store, stuffed it with some paper or plastic or whatever in there um, just to kind of give it, you know, like you're heading out the door and you grab your bag kind of a look. Over here, another vintage door with a stack of old books. There those old books are again. And then the old cheese boxes. And up here I got just a little postal thing there. And this area is going to be a little tough to see just because the sun is shining today, which is wonderful. I just have an old flower market sign there um, on top of this buffet and then some crocs down below. As I said before, we don't have a lot of storage in this area, so anything that could double up as decor and storage is good in my book. So you, we can put, you know, blankets and stuff inside the crocs and then the cabinets um, can be used as storage as well. And then just an old architectural salvage piece with a cloche on the top. And again, more of that greenery layered on top of the shutter. I also enjoy leaving these lights up. Um, they are patio lights, so I kind of feel like, you know, we're bringing the spring patio lights inside because, again, there is very much... Um, it is very much winter outside still and there's lots of snow on the ground so I'm gonna bring my patio indoors for now. I get a lot of questions on these curtains and all they are is painters drop cloths. Um, all I did was take the cloth and fold it in half if you could see that up there and then just hung them up with some little clips and called it a curtain. Moving on to here, we have a very large sectional. Like I said before, we have a family of eight, um, and so we needed the seating. Not my favorite piece, but it is functional and it is comfortable, so that's all that matters, I guess. Um, with this large piece, didn't leave much room for end tables, so I just took this little stool here and this is just an old plow bolts little caddy that I had picked up at um, a barn sale, I believe. And I just put the remote and stuff in there for, for the TV. And then here is our coffee table. It is another repurposed piece. It's just an old um, hauling cart and we just put some glass on the top. I layered it with a shutter. I kind of wanted to make this area feel like a potting shed, so to say. Again, my mind and where it, where it goes sometimes. But we got the old shutter and then the garden tools and um, some terracotta pots and seed packets. And then the fern and a watering can. And I think that is just a super simple 
little coffee table decor and it just screams spring to me. So that's that. And then I have this piece was actually one thing that was salvageable and left in the home, this old cabinet. And so I kept that and wanted to use it. And it holds kind of all my decor pieces or collections and stuff for the holidays. So I just kept the door open, put the ladder there, and just put all these fun little vintage finds in there. Some dishes layered, and then I got some little buttons down there and a little vintage bowl. And then in the windows, I just have my succulents that are getting ready. Once it warms up, they'll head outside. And then moving on to the dining room, which is right next to the living room. Again, we have a small space here, so, um, but I love it. I love our little home. And this is probably my favorite piece of all. If I had to pick one piece that I could keep, it would be this table. I love the character. I mean, I can't imagine if this piece could talk what it would say, but it's just chippy and white and I love it and it's big enough for our whole family. And then we have um, just mismatched chairs around it. Again, we eat at this table, so keeping it simple. For spring, all I did was take these old bottles and put some tulips in them and then you can change the flowers out or whatever as the season goes. So wrapping things up, um, this little corner here, which might be tough for you guys to see, but I just have a chair with the door and then the clock with the little scale on it, some succulents in there, and the clock is being held up by an old shelving bracket. That's that. And then of course I have this old broom because like I said before, um, spring cleaning. Um, so I love to bring in the old brooms and the cleaning brushes, um, which reminds me, I don't think I showed you guys. Let me not make you dizzy and turn around. Um, the old bed spring over here that I just layered the little cleaning brooms on. So that was kind of my thoughts behind that, like spring cleaning. And so just very, very simple. And then that brings us back around um, again to the kitchen. Oh, and we used the reclaimed wood from that shed on our little peninsula here and actually the end cap of that cabinet as well. And then these old bar stools are from my family's restaurant and we were able to take those when we sold it. So I just love having them in here. But I hope you guys we're able to find some inspiration, um, some spring ideas, and you know maybe some DIYs or something from this video that I shared and this home tour. And I want to thank Holly from Living It Country for inviting me um, to do this. And if you guys have any questions or you want to see more before and afters of our home, I would love for you to find me on Instagram at Farmhouse for Eight, um, as well as uh, Facebook and Pinterest, where I have lots of ideas, um, home tours for different seasons and things like that. So uh, thanks again for joining me. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. A big thank you to Heather for opening up her home and sharing it with us today. Go give her a follow on Instagram and go watch that playlist filled with farmhouse home tour inspiration. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys later on Living in Country. Bye.